This is a Telecaster parts caster in a beautiful bound, candy apple red. And I don't usually say this, but sometimes it's what's on the outside that counts. Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Landon and this is Lano27 Music. Thanks for checking out my channel. If you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe. And if you do like the video, click like. How you doing? Ooh, that's heavy. So, going back a few years, before I started the YouTube channel, I built a couple of parts casters. And this was the second one that I built. And so I can't go back and document the whole process in a video. So what I thought I'd do instead is go through the guitar and break it down and show you everything about it. Try to give you an idea of how it was assembled. It won't be a full step-by-step -step video like my blue telly. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. It's a, it's a really long video. It's a very, very detailed step-by-step -step how I assembled a blue Telecaster with a roasted maple neck. And it's doing pretty well, so check it out. Uh, it'll be in the cards, you can check it out. What I'll do instead is what I've done in other videos, and check the timestamps, it's gonna be broken up into a bunch of sections. I'll go through all the specs, I'll go through all the parts that I, I used on it, if I can find the links to the actual product pages where I bought them, I bought some stuff on Amazon, I bought some stuff on eBay, uh, I bought some stuff that you probably can't get anymore, so play it, we'll play it with my AC-15. They get a bad rap for being muddy, which I don't really agree with, so you can be the judge after you watch this, and you can check out my, another video I did on this about that whole topic, about muddy wide range humbuckers. Is it just a myth? Is it actually something real? Um, and then of course, I'll open up the guitar so we can take a look at the guts, see what's inside this. I don't usually say, don't judge a book by its cover or it's what's on the inside that counts. But in this case, you'll see what I mean. So stay tuned for that. Stay to the end of the video. I'll have a summary, pros and cons, what I think about this guitar that I put together myself. So it's a, you know, it's a learning experience building a guitar like this, doing a parts caster. It's uh, pretty fun. I like doing it. I've done four now. Technically, I have three guitars that I put together, four builds total. It's sort of confusing. If you want to know more about that, check out, I'll put a series for the cards to uh, the white telly that I did. Yeah, can you see it behind there? On the wall. So I put that one together a second time. I sort of reassembled that one. So let's get right into uh, the specs. All right, we'll do a quick walk down of the guitar and I'll go over the specs just quickly and then we'll get into a, a more detailed uh, spec by spec and all the, uh, the numbers that everybody wants to see. So, what is this? What is this guitar? What I was going for was kind of like, I wanted to do a, a 72 thin line without the F hole. So I found a body online and that ended up being this one. So going top to bottom, I've got, uh, so part of the guitar is, is Fender, official Fender parts, and part of it isn't. So I'll make sure you know exactly what is what. So the tuners are the, uh, they're the, uh, the classic style that basically have the little hole in the top and a little gap, and you can just pop your string and wind it up. These are my favorite tuners. This neck, it's an officially licensed Fender neck from Mighty Might. So they're allowed to do Fender copies of, uh, they do tellies and they do strats. And it's a really nice neck. And uh, we'll go more into details about that after. Moving on down, this body is from a company called Rock Audio. They no longer exist. They were doing, um, they were selling parts. Basically, you could buy bodies and necks and all the different parts of a guitar for relatively cheap. And uh, they were located somewhere in the United States. And I don't think they lasted more than a couple of years. So I managed to get one of the bodies. And I don't know if you can tell right now, I'm struggling to hold it up. And I'll explain that after. Uh, we've got a Fender neck plate, moving on down. This is an official Fender pickguard. It's the Perloid, and it's a three-ply, white, black, white. We've got some Fender wide-range humbuckers, got a bridge that is not an official Fender product, and then I've got two uh, dome knobs that are Fender, 
a uh, top hat switch, three-way switch, fender fair rules, and an electrosocket jack, and you can see the body is bound. Nice cream binding. Pretty nice. Uh, that's a quick overview. Let's get into more specs. I'll weigh the guitar. I'll plug it in. We'll see the resistance on the pickups so you can see what that's all about. And um, then we'll do a deep dive. We'll open up the guitar, take a look at the guts, see what parts I used in this. I don't remember. It's been a number of years, so it's interesting for me to open something up that I haven't seen in a while. It's also a learning experience because I did this years ago. So I did the soldering and I did all the, uh, the electronics inside. I'm curious how well I did. And uh, what we're gonna, I'm kind of laughing because I think I did okay, but you don't really know what you don't know until you know that you don't know what you know. Not sure if that came across. All right, let's, uh, let's get into the deep dive. All right, the first thing we'll do is weigh the guitar. And I know it's really heavy and it's a backbreaker. I just can't remember the exact number. So here we go, 4.342 kilograms. It's a 9.53 pound guitar. That's pretty much way too heavy for my liking, and that's why it kind of gets played the least. And I think if I didn't like the neck on it and the pickups, I probably wouldn't keep this guitar. So maybe that's the saving grace. But anyways, here we're measuring the resistance. These are modern wide range humbuckers from Fender. So I'm plugging in the cable and I've got a multimeter here. And I'll take the readings from the neck, the, uh, the neck and the bridge together, and then just the bridge. So 7.8 kilo ohms for the neck. Switching over to the middle, 4.0, not really a good reading, but, uh, and then the bridge, 8.07, so the bridge is the hottest of the two. Hi, this is Paul Rudd from Marvel's Ant-Man. Landon asked me to continue this video voiceover for him, and he thought it'd be great. I'm just kidding. People say in the comments, I get that comment all the time that I sound like Paul Rudd in these voiceovers. I don't hear it, but anyways. Um, this is something that I want to show that I, I didn't do in my last video, the, uh, the blue telly, the, uh, the how to build. I didn't show a breakdown of all the prices and, um, and I just didn't include a breakdown of prices. You can get so many different prices depending where you live and where you shop and there's just so many varieties of places to get stuff these days. This one was like five years ago and um, I kept a little spreadsheet. So if you want to take a look and uh, these are all the parts and the breakdown. You can't get them necessarily anymore. But uh, yeah, if you want to take a closer look, just pause the video and you can look at all the parts. I'm not going to read them out. But um, yeah, so here's a breakdown and uh, the rough total, the bottom, you can see there are $592.59 in U.S. funds back in 2015. Okay, before I go over all the specific specs, we're going to uh, open the guitar, like open the cavity. And uh, to do that, I'm going to loosen the strings and take them off. And uh, I forgot the name. This is the F-Style tuners that I was mentioning. And I like that you can just pop the strings off. They hold their shape. You can pop them right back on. So I'm just getting the strings out of the way. We're going to open the cavity. I'm going to pull out the, uh, the jack on the side. And we're also going to take a look at the neck. And then we'll get into all the specs. I keep saying we're getting into the, all the specs, but I mean it. So anyways, uh, I'm pulling open the, uh, the uh, cavity here. You can tell I'm having a little bit of trouble. It's a little bit tight. And I'll explain that in a minute. There was a reason that that happened. So uh, there was a number of screws. I got them all off. And if I can just wiggle this thing off, I'm trying not to rip it out and pull the cables out. There we go. <clears throat> so now you see the back. A little bit of shielding on the pick guard. You got the two wide range humbuckers. And you can see that there's uh, some writing on the back of the pick guard. That's something that was there when I bought it. And it was a stock fender pick guard. So I don't know what that is. But You'll notice there's some copper tape in certain spots, but not in all the spots. And we're taking a close-up look here through. Yeah, yeah, it does look like a little bit of a hack job. You can see I've done, I have a router and I also have a screwdriver. And this is all coming back to me now. What happened was, um, originally, the body was built for two regular size humbuckers, but not for wide range humbuckers. So I got a little hand router. And you can see here I'm prepping it for some routing. I put tape around so I was trying not to scratch the body. And uh, did the best I could kind of for what I know about routing. You can see here, not the best job, but I just wanted to make it a little bit bigger for these uh, wide range humbuckers so they could fit in. 
And then uh, I put in some copper shielding tape, which probably isn't really even needed for these humbuckers, but I put it in anyways. And so the way it ended up now, I'm guessing I'd opened it up a couple times and had to even expand them further and didn't feel like putting the tape back. That could, that's my best guess. I can't really remember exactly. It looks like a mess, but it's covered up. So here's a close-up of the, uh, the wiring. It looks like I used 250 meg alpha pots. I think typically you use 500 with humbuckers, but again, this is a few years ago, I didn't know what I was doing. There's a fender switch, and then a close-up at the back of uh, the wide-range humbuckers, which look pretty cool from the other side. All right, so let's get this thing put back together. We'll get the pick guard put on, all the screws put on. Before I put on the strings, I usually like to do a quick test to see if uh, I didn't pull out any of the wiring and ruin any of the soldering, just to make sure the connections are all working. And so what I do is I just grab a little mini amp, plug it in to the jack and then uh, I do a tap test basically you select your pickup and you just tap it with a little piece of metal and if you get a sound like a it's almost like a an echoey sound on each one then you know the wiring is okay on each pickup so you do a, a test on each on each uh, part of the pickup selector so they're middle so I'd be tapping both there and then the bridge and you want to make sure you're not getting sound from the other ones and you're good so everything looks good and we're good to go restring the guitar but before we do that, we're going to take a look at something here that I recommend if you're building a Telecaster. It's called an electro electro socket jack instead of the uh, the regular cup style. And you'll see here it's just held in by two screws that go directly into the wood of the body, and it never comes loose. That's the uh, the great thing about it. Um, I've been pretty lucky with most of my tellies. I don't really have the the uh, the cups coming out, but they can. They can wiggle loose, and basically. I don't have an example here to show you, but they're held in differently. They're held in by like a bracket of this bar that goes across inside the body. And so it's hard to install that. You need a special tool to do it. You can see there isn't one in here. And that's it. The electro socket jack just sits there. They're relatively cheap. I think you can get these for like 10 bucks. I'll have a link when I show all the different parts. And uh, all the parts will be listed in the description, by the way, if you wanted to get any of this stuff. And uh, man, these extreme close-ups are pretty, pretty cool. You can see that the... Uh, the metal is starting to wear there. Not sure what kind of metal it is, but anyways, next section here, we're going to take a look at the neck. I'm just going to pop it off, and all I'm going to do is just loosen the strings. And I should have done this earlier, but this was actually recorded after the fact. It wasn't recorded at the same time as the other part of the video when I took the uh, the pick guard off. And so, just going to take the four bolts out of the neck here carefully. I don't want to chip and break anything. It's easy to do. Not saying I've done it, but it's easy to do. And I could see you, uh, you could definitely damage the uh, the body and the finish if you're not careful doing this. So put it on something that's solid. Like I've got a, a work pad here and I've got a cloth underneath. So nothing's going to, nothing's going to shift around. So taking the four bolts out, they should come out relatively easy. You can see here, you just get them out. One, two, three, four, moving the neck plate out of the way. And then it's still held in by the strings. Just trying to ease it out and we're going to take a look. This is from Mighty Might. I mentioned that. I'll talk about the specs after, the exact specs. You can see here, lick by Fender, licensed by Fender. See the grain, the way it's cut. I believe that's quarter sawn. I'm not any, I have no um, knowledge of wood working or anything like that, but somebody mentioned that on another neck I had and it looked like that. So I think that's quarter sawn. So you got the skunk stripe and you got the truss rod inside. And uh, yeah, these are great necks. Um, this one's a satiny finish. Uh, and it's rolled edges, very similar to like an American Pro neck. Definitely recommend them. They go for like 100, I think 125 Canadian or US. I can't remember the exact price. Um, you can get them from Stumac. That's where I got mine. Get them from Amazon. You can get them from, I think you can get them directly from Mighty Might. You can check that out. So just putting it back on here. And again, I'm just being careful to uh, tighten each screw individually, just a little bit one at a time, kind of just, uh, you know, and you can see they're fitting in nicely here because I've, I've taken it off, I think, a few times. And originally I'd put some paraffin wax to help with the, uh, help it glide in a little bit easier. So that's the neck. That's the insides. Now let's go over the whole guitar in some beautiful close-up shots and talk about all the specs. All right, while well, you're looking at these amazing close-up shots, they're pretty cool to look this close up. Um, so I'll go over all the specs here. This, again, is a, a Mighty Might neck. It's a, a satiny finish. It's a, a one-piece maple. It's 25 and a half inch scale length. 
It's a plastic nut and um, nine and a half inch radius, 21 frets. Just getting a close up look here at the uh, adjusting nut for the truss rod. I believe the specs are pretty similar to, to uh, Fender, if not exact. And uh, yeah, just a little zoom in there. And uh, at one point I thought the neck, I thought it was a two piece because there was a little line, but it turns out it's just the grain. You can see it right there. I thought that was like a, a piece that was attached on top, but it's not the case. When I when you go down the neck, you can see that it's just a line in the grain. That's uh, that's fine. And uh, here's a close up of the tuners. These are again the F style tuners, which I couldn't remember the name in the uh, the quick walk down. Uh, if you want to see exactly how much they cost or what they are, just take a look in the description. I don't remember anymore. And uh, here's just a quick look down the neck again. Um, really nice neck. I think this is probably the highlight of the guitar. And you can see a nice satiny finish, which is my favorite. I'd take that over anything. Um, in terms of shape, I don't think they really mention the shape. I think it's a C shape, possibly a D. It feels, it feels similar to a, a typical Fender. It's definitely not a V or a U. It's not chunky and it's not thick. So it's sort of maybe like a medium size. There's another close up. Okay, let's take a look at the rest of the parts now. As I mentioned a few times, Fender wide range humbuckers in the neck and in the bridge. And uh, they're pretty good, I like them. And here's a uh, close up of the Perloid pick guard. It's a three ply, you can see here white, black, white. This is a generic hardtail bridge. Um, it's not an official Fender bridge and Here's a close-up of the, the dome knobs. These are Fender official dome knobs. And the switch tip is uh, a top hat. Just trying to make it a little bit more classy, right, with the top hat. And then close-up here of a little bit of the binding you can see here. It's got kind of like a yellow cream to it. And uh, I think it looks pretty cool. Here's a very close-up of the paint job. And it's very sparkly and really nice. Here's a strap button and more close-ups of the uh, the binding that's going along it. Official Fender fair rules. You can just see how they stick out a little bit. And some more close-ups of that. And then uh, just uh, taking a look here. Fender stamped neck plate. And just taking a look at the back of the body. It The body was like 94 bucks, I think. And it's pretty nice except for the weight. Everything else I really like about it. There's the electro socket jack again and just doing a pan across. And uh, that pretty much covers everything. If there's any specs I missed, if there's anything you want to know about the guitar, shoot me a message or uh, leave a comment. I mean, obviously it's not a message, but um, uh, it, the guitar looks great. When you take the pickguard off, it looks horrible. But I mean, that's maybe, hey, you know, that's what a pickguard is for. I don't know. Anyways, hope you enjoyed that. Let's, let's hear it now.
All right, so you got to see everything about this guitar. I hope that deep dive was useful. If, um, you know, if you're interested in making your own guitar or assembling your own guitar or building your own guitar, don't say you're making a guitar unless you actually grow the tree or plant the tree and cut the wood. People uh, kind of freak out online about that unless you say you assembled it, like Ikea furniture or something. I've had that argument a few times. So now I say I assembled it or I, yeah, even if you say you built it, I don't know. Whatever. The internet's such a, it's the internet. You know what I mean, right? A um, couple of things. So yeah, summary of this of this guitar. What do I think about this guitar? I'll get into my pros and cons. Overall, it's uh, the guitar in my collection that gets played the least. And the reason I'll explain is is one of the cons, and that is one of the reasons. Um, first of all, let's uh, let's talk about some pros. I'm a fan of the wide range humbuckers. I don't know if you are. Let me know in the comments. Did you like the sounds? I think the tones out of this are pretty cool. If somebody was looking at building a Telecaster, I would definitely recommend one of these necks from Mighty Might. The, uh, the finish on it is really nice. It's like a satiny kind of finish with rolled edges. The, uh, the fretwork is nice. And uh, I have no complaints about the neck. It's really, really nice. I'd say it's uh, pretty comparable to a, a pro model from Fender. The neck, that is. The body is nice looking. It has a really nice sparkly finish. The binding is really nice. There's not really any imperfections, maybe some little minor things, but you saw the price and uh, it's kind of crazy what, what the price was. And from what I heard, Rock Audio went under because they couldn't keep up with demand. The prices were too low and they were selling a lot of stuff. That's what I heard. I don't, I don't really have any way to uh, check on that, but Woo! getting into the cons and there are a few. And the one I mentioned, the reason this guitar gets played the least and if there was a guitar today that I was going to sell, it would be this one. The body, although it's beautiful and it's ash, it's a brick. This thing weighs a ton. It's, well, you saw the weight of the whole guitar. It was like nine and a half pounds. We're talking like Les Paul, vintage Les Paul kind of weight. It just weighs too much. How much does that affect the tone? That's, uh, you know, that's a major problem for me. So... I'm not sure what you can get for a parts caster these days, if I did want to put this on the market, especially with uh, how it looks inside. I mean, you would never know, right? Let that be a lesson, maybe. If you're going to buy something used, have a look inside. You just don't know what you're going to get, right? That's my handiwork. Hey, you know what? I will say, though, the wood is super tough, and it was dense and wet when I was doing that routing. And I didn't have that problem with the router when I cut some other, some other necks, not necks, some other bodies. This one was tough to work with, and uh, that could have been part of the problem. That's pretty much the only con I have with this guitar. I used the 250 pots instead of the 500. I think when I bought them, I didn't know the difference. Is there a big difference? You let me know. I think people typically use the 500s with humbuckers. I could be wrong. I obviously didn't know what I was doing back then, and I don't know today enough to... Uh, have an opinion on that, but I want to hear yours. Would you keep a guitar if it was this heavy? Would that be something that would make you want to sell it? Uh, let me know again. Just let me know everything about yourself in the comments. I've asked you to let me know. Let me know. Just let me know if you want to let, let me know if you don't want to let me know. Hopefully this video was of interest and uh, I like looking inside guitars to see what's in them. Even when they look like this, you know, and that's going to do it for this video. That's going to wrap it up. If you haven't already, please subscribe and like the video. I did mention that earlier, but I, I do appreciate it if you do like the video. And share it around if you do like my channel. Share it around my channel. Spread the news. I think I'm a pretty relaxing... Oh, actually, I wanted to mention something before I end this video. Let me know if you agree with this. The, uh, the top two comments that I'm seeing on a lot of my videos are... I look like somebody from the Green Mile, a character. I don't remember that movie that well, but I look like somebody like that. And uh, I sound like Paul Rudd, apparently. People say I'm the narration is like Paul Rudd. And uh, yeah, I don't, they're not insults, they're uh, compliments. I take those both as compliments. I really like Paul Rudd, he's kind of cool. Uh, he's kind of cool, he's awesome. What am I talking about? Yeah, man. Oh, that's loose. Can't sell that. Um, yeah, that's going to do it. Again, I'm Landon, this is Lano 27 Music. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Thanks for checking out my stuff. Because people like you watch my videos, I can spend money on making things like this and buying guitars and then doing these videos. And that's uh, 
that's my hobby and that's what I like to do. And when I say play guitar and have fun, this is what I do for fun. This isn't my full-time job. I do a full-time, I'm a nine to five, I work, and uh, this is just a hobby. This is just for fun. So I'm really happy that I can do this and uh, I wanna keep doing it. So as always, play guitar and have fun and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Does it taste like candy apple? Why do they call it candy apple red? Oh, that's why. This is a beautiful Telecaster parts caster that I assembled a few years ago. Mm. Bound. Yes?